Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch that launched in 2019, a 1,000-piece limited edition in titanium. This is the Hublot Classic Fusion Ferrari GT, a rare feet of genuine beauty from Hublot. This watch was co-developed and co-styled with Ferrari's internal styling department, the Centro Stile. So this is a collaboration between Hublot and Ferrari at the aesthetic level and a great success. It has genuine grace and it marked the introduction of the Unico in-house calibers into the classic fusion family. So the watch in titanium is 45 millimeters in diameter, though it doesn't really feel or look that big. It's 13.4 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, it is 54.2 millimeters. So we'll throw this watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you'll get a good sense of its fit. It is nothing like a 45 millimeter watch. In fact, if you'd asked me to guess, I would have said, yes, it's broad across the wrist, but it looks about a 42. Now it wears fine on my wrist, and if your wrist is as small as 14 centimeters, it's gonna wear well. It's very light. You can see it's fairly thin for what it is, an Hublot sports watch. And because the end of the case slopes down, it's not quite as jarringly broad broad across the wrist as it would be if it flared out straight. There would be some overlap beyond my wrist, but because it does have that arcing curve, it's a better match for human anatomy, especially if you're borderline in size to wear the watch. So this looks really good. I would be happy with this. Uh, taking a look at the strap, this is classic Hublot fusion, as they like to say, but I'll give them credit for this. It's vulcanized rubber in black on the bottom. It is black calfskin like Ferrari upholstery on the top, and you can see it has a little gusset molded in so that the pin of the buckle... Uh, traverses a piece of rubber rather than puncturing the leather, making it last longer. You can see that the strap is held in using little bolts that are both polished and shaped like Hublot H's. Now rolling around to the clasp, it too is titanium. You can see media blasted titanium like the case. It pops open when you press both triggers. It is a trigger release. There's a little H built into the chassis underneath. What happens is you take the strap, you tuck it in, you buckle it down, and then you close the clasp. And so all the excess length hides underneath the strap. There's no need for minder loops. The external look is very clean, extremely tidy. Taking a quick look at the case, you can see it's got some hollows in the flanks of the lugs to pare down their apparent mass. Everything here is cool, media blasted, matte, and anti-reflective. Inside, you can see we have a blackened inner case vessel, and there is quite a gap between inner case and outer case, giving it an open and airy look. The crown is a quarter turn lock. So one quarter turn locks it, one quarter turn unlocks it. The watch is 100 meters water resistant. Now the Unico caliber, this is actually the second generation Unico. It's the 1281, the 1280 second generation Unico family launched in 2018. It is technically identical to the first Unico, but the difference is it is 1.3 millimeters thinner to better suit an elegant case. It remains a flyback chronograph standard, so you can reset and restart with a single push of the trigger down at four o'clock and you can see we have a, a Torx key type motif inside the pushers to give it the look of Ferrari switch gear. Now on the dial, we do have loom. We'll do a loom shot right here. Plenty of loom, including on the sub registers and the numerals are radially arrayed. We have one sapphire over another sapphire and from this angle, you can really see it. We have the outer sapphire that protects the dial of the watch. Then we have a second sapphire on which the indices, the numerals, all of the appurtenances of the dial, including the sub registers are mounted. Now you can see a feature that I happen to love. Let's quickly jump that hand out of the way. And that is the use of a chronograph 60 minute register. So you can see we have a, a skeletal date that runs around the dial and it sits atop a little black panel so the date is actually lighter than the black panel so you see it sort of highlighted against so that is the date right there it does have a quick set system the watch does have hacking seconds and we have a 60 minute chronograph register which i like because i find it easier to read than a 30 minute chronograph register it's just more intuitive to use now we have a dial that is built around the unico caliber 1281 as you could see let me show you how this works. We have a column wheel down at six o'clock. 
And you can see that moving. It has a little H-shaped bolt on its top. And then adjacent to that, we have a lateral clutch. So these components are normally on the back of a movement. Hublot brings them to the front so you can enjoy all the pleasures of display case back without actually having to remove your watch. You can see the center of the dial is one and the same as the caliber 1281. 1281 is the same diameter as the standard Unico 1240 series. They're both 30 millimeters. This one, though, is 1.3 millimeters thinner. It's 6.75 millimeters thick. And now you can see the watch is Ferrari branded. It is a limited edition of 1,000 pieces. It is individually numbered. Here we have the automatic winding 43 joule Unico 1280. It beats away at 4 hertz. It has a 72 hour power reserve. Of course, it has a column wheel with lateral clutch, a very traditional setup for a chronograph. It also has a full escapement in silicon. So the silicon escapement is unlubricated. So it has better performance in the moment, but also better longevity in between services. You could see that there is a rack and pinion based micrometric fine adjustment mechanism for the timing of the watch, but most timing is going to be done with the Etichron system, which is there for both timing adjustment and beat error adjustment. And again, it beats weight eight beats per second. It says full adjusted, which I take to mean five positions. That would be a standard full adjustment. All of its grace so it's got a techno-industrial look that matches the case. And there is a motif at center with the Ferrari Cavallino Rampante. It is a center lock style, just like you would find on ultra high performance Ferrari road cars and race cars. Center lock is how you remove ultra high performance wheels such as those that you would find in a race. This watch has a lot to recommend it. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.